Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Are you looking for a reliable and affordable VPS hosting? Hostinger offers an exclusive Black Friday deal on their VPS subscription plan. You can get a 12 month VPS hosting plan for just $6.99 per month, which is a whopping 63% discount. But wait, there is more. You can also use my code, which is code with Ari, to get 10% discount on top of the discount that Hostinger offers. Don't miss out on this amazing offer and take your website to the next level with Hostinger's powerful VPS hosting. What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to the 8th video of my Laravel Livewire video series where we will have a look at how we could work with lifecycle hooks. Lifecycle hooks on Laravel Livewire are special methods that allow you to perform certain actions at different stages of a Livewire component's lifecycle. These hooks are executed automatically by Livewire, providing you with the ability to interact with the component's lifecycle events. We have already worked with one lifecycle hook. So let's navigate back to PHPStorm for a moment and let's open our task index because right here you'll see that we have defined the mount method, which once again is called when the component is first instantiated and mounted. In addition to the mount method, Livewire supports six other lifecycle hooks. Once you become familiar with them, you will find yourself using them frequently. Now let's cover all of them right inside of our task index, right below the mount method. The second lifecycle hook is called public function hydrate. This hook is called when the component is hydrated with data from the server. The third lifecycle hook that we have is the public function boot method, which is called at the beginning of every request, both initial and subsequent. We have the public function updating which is called before Livewire updates the component's data properties with user input. Then we have the public function updated, which is called after the component's data properties have been updated. We have the public function rendering, which is called before the, where is it? Render method is being called. And then we got the public function rendered which is called after the render method is called. And finally, we have the public function dehydrate method, which is called at the end of every component request. These hooks provide a way to perform actions such as initializing data, making API calls, manipulating data, and way more at specific points in the Livewire component cycle. Now let's scroll up and let's start inside the hydrate method first. Now, once again, the hydrate method is a lifecycle hook that is called when the component is hydrated with data from the server. Livewire basically needs to send data back and forth between PHP and JavaScript for it to work with the way it does. As part of the messages that get sent there is information about the component and information about the properties. But for the information to be accessible and usable by JavaScript, it needs to be in the right format. The process of hydration is taking the messages and converting its value back into PHP, creating the LiveWire component and creating any of the properties that components has. Now let's actually add a simple DD right here for a moment of OK. Let's navigate back to the browser. Let's refresh the page and try to create a new task. So let's say task 2. Click on new task. And right here, you will see that the die dump has been printed out because the hydrate runs at the beginning of every subsequent request. Now, the second method that I want to cover quickly is the boot method. So let me comment out the DD. And the boot method in Livewire is a lifecycle hook that is called at the beginning of every request, both initial and subsequent. It allows you to perform any necessary initialization or setup tasks before the component starts processing their request. Now you probably might wonder what the difference is with the mount method. As helpful as the mount method is, it only runs once per component lifecycle. And you may want to run logic at the beginning of every single request to the server for a given component. So what you could do right here, instead of initializing the task property in the mount method, is basically copying what we got right here, commenting it out, pasting it in the boot method. If we navigate back to the browser and refresh it, you'll see that the tasks are still visible. And this can be especially useful when you need to perform certain tasks before every request, regardless of the specific action being performed. And well, we want to specify the tasks property that we have defined 
before any action is being performed. Now, the updating method in Laravel LiveWire is a lifecycle hook that is called before LiveWire updates the component's data properties with user input. This hook allows you to perform any necessary actions or validation before the component's data is updated. Now, I currently don't have any updating data, so I will skip this one, but the name of the method basically says what it does. Then we have the updated method, which is a lifecycle hook that is called after the component's data properties have been updated. It allows you to perform any necessary actions or manipulation after the data has been updated. This hook is particularly useful when you need to react to changes in the component's data and perform additional logic based on those changes. Now, once again, I'm gonna skip this one as well, and I'm gonna continue on with the rendering method. Like I've mentioned before, this is called before the rendered method is called. It allows you to perform any necessary action or manipulation before the component is rendered. The view method has two arguments that we can define. The first is view, while the second one is named data. Both represent data that have been added inside the render method. The view argument is the actual view that's going to be rendered, while the data is the data that is being passed through the view. So let's quickly add a DD right here of view. If we navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, and right here, you will see that task index.blade.php has been rendered. If we open the data, you will see that we're passing in a button, our tasks property, our name property, and the layout configuration. If we navigate back to PHP Storm, output the data, you'll see that the properties that we have defined are all printed out. So what the rendering method basically allows you to do is modifying the data, since the rendering method is being called before the view is rendered. So let's actually modify the name property, because right now it has been set equal to null. So what we could do is basically say, well, data brackets name is equal to Dari. Now let's then DD the data. If we then refresh the browser, you will see that name have been set. Now let's move on to the next method, which is the rendered method, which is a lifecycle hook that is called after the render method has been called and the component has been rendered. In the rendered method, you can access the rendered view and the data passed to the view. So we need to pass in once again two arguments, but the first one is view, while the second one is HTML. Now I'm not gonna output the view because it's the same view variable as in the rendering method, but if we DD, let's say HTML, refresh it, you'll see that the entire HTML of the page has been printed out, which is pretty cool. And finally, we have the dehydrate method, which is called at the end of every component's request. It allows you to perform any necessary cleanup or finalization task before the component is finished processing the request. Now, after a request has been performed, I want to convert my collection to an array. So what we could do right here is basically say, well, this tasks is equal to this tasks, but we're gonna add the two array methods to it. If we then output this tasks, refresh it, you will see that the output is an array right now. Now I want to wrap up this video where we have covered all the lifecycle hooks in LiveWire. In the next video, I want to have a look at how we could deploy our LiveWire project on a VPS hosting. If you do like my content and you want to see more, please leave a like. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.